Hello lads and ladies and welcome to this and welcome back for another video on the channel. Today we are back with some more League One content. As you guys know, this season we have tried to smash out as much League One content, whether it be a live stream, whether it be a round, whether it be predicting results, whether it be looking into, into that, the latest news into League One, or even having a look at a team season. Today we are carrying that over. Today we are doing the current top of the league, Plymouth Argyle, who won promotion last weekend in absolutely emphatic style. They've been brilliant all season. We are going to have a look at how they did it, where did it come from, the players, the management, the supporters, everything came together for that football club this season as well. And why Plymouth Argyle not only you know, have given themselves a boost, but they've given every club in League One a hope, a belief, and also a little bit of a boost that they can be the next team fighting for promotion to the Championship. But if you guys are new to the channel, please like this video. Can we try and get, we'll go for, we've got 500 on the Ipswich one. We'll set a like goal for 150 on this one, see where we go. Also subscribe if you're new. We will be covering Plymouth, Ipswich and the potential playoff winner as well next season as well. So stay around for that. Let's get on with today's video. So Plymouth Argyle are a very good historic football club. It's one of those where it's an absolute trek to get to. But you go there, you enjoy going down there. Um, you know, it's a beautiful place and it's a good football, um, you know, football inside to, you know, to go and play your football at. And over the last few years, they've kind of been League One, League Two. They obviously went down a few years ago and they went down with one of the highest points tally, you know, in recent years as well. They went on a really bad game run. They were 12th with a few games to go and ended up finishing in the bottom four after, um, you know, playing scumf up on the final day. Obviously, a lot happened in that game, uh, which we won't get into that, you know, shouldn't have happened. But um, even so, they went down. They weren't good enough over the 46 games. And Derek Adams built something at Plymouth where he brought them up originally unfortunately his time kind of fell short there he's still a Plymouth legend in my eyes I think what he did for that football club he he kind of reunited everyone he you know even he said it's the best part of his career um you know in management of what, what he did down there um, and probably just outstayed his welcome I'd say a little bit um, and probably it was best when he did leave the football club um when he did um and then they brought a man called Ryan Lowen, who, again, you know, when you look at it, the, the appointments they've made over the recent years, Derek Adams was very good for, you know, you know, you know quite a period of time. Ryan Lowe won the promotion out of uh, League Two in, in great style as well. He obviously won back-to-back -back promotions out of League Two because he previously did it at Bury. Um, obviously, things happened there. Obviously, went to uh, Plymouth, brought a lot of it, uh, a couple of players from Berry to Argyle, and you know they went up again. Did really well, scored a lot of goals, played on the front foot, played high pressing football. You know, got played with a purpose and did really well. The first season back in um, League One, out of the three years he'd been back in uh, the third tier, they finished on 53 points, which is a respectable t you know, return. However, the one thing I want to highlight, they conceded 80 goals, which is a lot. Obviously, I remember Fleetwood playing and they conceded five um, against Fleetwood and they looked very shaky. They didn't quite look comfortable um, in themselves, although they stayed up and deserved to stay up. And it was a good season. The defence wasn't quite good enough. They could score a lot of goals. They could win games. They won 14 games that season. So that shows you, you know, they had quality to kind of rebuild on it. And then the next season, obviously, it's all about improving. Where can we go? And they started really well. They made Home Park a fortress. They were pretty much getting two points a game uh, at Home Park. And just doing really well. And unfortunately, Ryan Lowe left the football club for Preston, which I said at the time, although Preston were in a higher division, Preston were in the championship, do I think Preston are a bigger club fan base and support-wise than Plymouth? They're not, in my opinion. I think I'd, I'd rather play for Plymouth than I'd rather play for Preston, yeah, from my perspective, because I felt kind of Preston are 
a stagnated championship club at this period of time at Argyle were looking like they could go in really up to the championship and cause problems for teams and it looked like something special to be part of so I called it a backwards move instead of panic like Argyle haven't done in recent years they hired Stephen Schumacher the brains behind the operations of Ryan Lowe many Argyle fans tell me and you could clearly see it and the players respected him. And sometimes when you bring in a number two, you kind of think, well, he's the player's mate. He's, you know, number two, you should go for someone else. New ideas. But he, he, he kept the same ideas, the same identity, but added to it. And you could see the style of football they were starting to play. And it was winning football. It was relentless football. And the players loved it. The fans loved it. The management was loving it because they were winning games of football. Unfortunately, they started to slip down the table a little bit. And when you've got, you know, big football clubs and you've got, you know, Wigan going on the run they did, Rotherham going on the run they did, uh, they picked them to the top two. And then it always looked like, right, can they get into the playoffs? And unfortunately, that last, that, that last seven games, they only won once. They lost 5-0 on the last day of the season to, you know, MK Dons, which saw them into third. How time has changed. And everyone thought, well, that's it. Plymouth have bottled it, as people say. And I don't like using that word, but I don't think they did. I just kind of think that, you, you know, you deserve to give other you know teams credit. Look, one win from seven isn't great. It really is. And it was in their hands and they controlled it. But unfortunately, they couldn't hold on to it. However, in the summer, what they did, they had a look. They didn't go panicking. They didn't go and splash money at it like other football clubs have done. We mentioned Ipswich. You know, they had the budget, but they spent it well. That's what you've got to remember. Plymouth weren't able to go and spend millions and millions of pounds and thousands and thousands of pounds on players' wages. So they brought young, hungry players to the football club that want to fight, want to make a pathway for themselves, want to improve, want to be dedicated and play for that football club. They brought in Bally Mumba, who is an absolute fantastic player, on loan from Norwich, and he's been an absolute gem this season. You know, players like, you know, Mikhail Miller, who was at Rotherham, he did really well. But then they also brought in experienced players in, like your Matt Butchers. But the one thing Argyle have got when you look at their squad, they've got a team there. Most of them have been there for several years down to the core. When, you, you know, your Ryan Hardy's, you know, your Niall Ennis has been there a couple of years as well. Your Cooper's grown up there. You know, so many more you could mention. All they needed to do is literally add a few gems to the foundation, you know, had been previously built by previous successors. So they deserve credit as well. Schumacher's just come in and, you know, done the hardest part, really, where finishing the job off, adding the quality to it, which is hard to add to an already good squad of last year that accumulated 80 points. So they did that. They brought in, like, you know, like Matt Butch, who was, you know, he's been brilliant this year, gone, gone under the radar. And they've got players who can score goals from different areas as well. And they started really well at home. They won the first eight games at, um, eight or nine games at home, which was fantastic. They lost to Port Vale. And everyone thought when they lost to Port Vale at home, when they lost to Fleetwood away, when they lost to, um, you know, Charlton away got, got hammered. Oh, Plymouth are going to fade away. They're going to bottle it. All season long, that's all I've heard. But they got better for it. They got stronger for it. They've had more kickbacks than any other team in League One. One including Morgan Whitaker. Under the shining light, one of the best players in League One between the month of, you know, the end of July and January, left the football club due to him being on loan, Swansea recalling him. And, you know, the wrong call, really, unfortunately, for, for you know, for, for Swansea and for Morgan, because I think Morgan wanted to say at Plymouth, it was quite clear. And I said at the time, I think that decision was hard you know, for them to take. But they took that and they added quality in January. They lost a gem, but they, they kind of added diamonds to the squad. Um, you know, players like Jamie Tete, who is a ball play midfielder, who likes to get on the ball, who's very silky, who can turn on the half turn, can play it forwards, run forwards. That's what they're all about, playing forwards, running forwards, energy, you know, don't give up, um, you know, attracting, um, you know, the best type of football. And that's what Plymouth are all about. And Jamie Tete is perfect for that. Um, you know, Callum Wright is an excellent signing, probably scored the biggest goal of their season 
obviously the goal that won the promotion, you'd probably say is the biggest, but to win it in the fashion he did at Shrewsbury in the last minute of the game, you know, to win them the game, to potentially win them promotion, to keep the run going, you know, was an absolute fantastic, you know, kind of signing for them. They've added like the likes of Ben Wayne as well, which is a, you know, a very good signing as well. But also they sorted the defence out this year as well. And they've kept 18 clean sheets. One of them is down to Cooper, the goalkeeper, who's been absolutely fantastic. However, got injured at Sheffield Wednesday away. They lost him. They lost away at Wednesday and everyone thought, here we go. They're going to fade away. But no, the, the, obviously the backup goal, goalkeeper, Callum Burton, has come in and done a very, very good job. Um, kept seven clean sheets. They don't really, you know, look like conceding goals like they once did. Look, they, they are a bit more leaky than an Ipswich or a Bolton um, type of side. But again, an absolute, you know, fantastic defensive record they've got. But also they've got the energy to go and score late goals. And people call them fluky. Well, just because they've scored, you know... A big portion of their goals, I think it's one in five of their goals has been in the last kind of 10 to 15 minutes of the game. And, you know, it's not lucky. It's because they're fitter than everyone else. They're stronger than everyone else. The mindset at Argyle has changed. And that is the difference. And they've gone on a great run. They lost at Wembley. Another kickback, as we mentioned. But again, they came back stronger for it. And since then, they've won, you know, five out of six and, you know, been really good going away to these tougher grounds and, you know, that are horrible to go to and winning the game and you know, getting over the line. Kind of the hardest bit is always getting that next win when you need to win for promotion. And they've done that on a shoestring budget. Well done to the owners, well done to the directors, well done to the board, well done to the supporters for getting behind them because every week they pack out home park. There's fifteen to sixteen thousand in there. They're loud, you know, they travel across the country, and um, you know, leave at three, four AM in the morning just to get to, you know, Accrington or Fleetwood or, you know, somewhere like that away. They've had tough times in the past, but the good times are coming back and I see no reason why Argyle can't go and strengthen the squad and finish you know above those bottom three because I don't even see them finishing you know scraping I see them comfortable lower mid table area at this moment in time so well done to them they've done it on a low budget they deserve a massive amount of credit and you know you've been a joy to league one and they've given teams like Fleetwood, Shrewsbury, Exeter, Lincoln, you know, those types of sides hope that they can, you know, one day, you know, have a good three-year plan because that's what it is, the three-year League One plan, which I always bang on about, stay up, go again, have a look to see what you can do, then the third year you finish it and they've done that really, really well and it's just a brilliant, brilliant achievement, I cannot stress it enough. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Plymouth fans, let me know your moments of the season. Was it the Burson game? Was it the Shrewsbury game? Was it kind of reacting from the Wembley um, loss as well? Was it, you know, your January transfer window? Let us know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see me do this for the playoff teams, how each team got into the playoffs, let me know in the comment section below. Please like today's video. Subscribe if you are new. We, are, we'll, we will be continuing this League One series as well. Thank you for watching. Please like. Subscribe, turn notifications on, and until next time, I will see you later. Up the League One.